Welcome to the Triple P Podcast, Preds, Pucks, Pinoys, hosted by Justin Bradford and Matt Best. Hello and welcome to Triple P, Preds, Pucks, Pinoys, Justin Bradford, Matt Best. Uh, Matt, if you, folks, if you are watching, then you see a nice vacuum cleaner in the background. I had to clean <laughs> and I just decided to leave it there. Um, I'm glad you, now if it starts moving. Uh, then I'm going to be deeply concerned and you're going to have some ghosts ghost explaining to do yeah. yeah, some ghost shit. Well, folks, we, we said we knew what we were going to be talking about next. Most likely that would be goaltender Yusuf Saros signing his contract. And I'm not going to say we called it because it's one of those things where I think everyone was on the same page with this of what the expectations were given the comparables for his contract. But a four by five, that is right up there. I think he they could have went to 5.25. I think this kind of shows too that Saros' team is probably looking at 5.75 or 6, and the Predators are probably lowballing because that's what the team does. It is not something personal, but that's what the team does. Probably looking somewhere around 4.25 or something. Yeah, that's... it's the same thing when you go buy a car. You don't just go, yeah. okay, I will buy it for the MSRP here. Thanks. Right. You try right. to get something. Yeah. So it's fair. It's I think it's a fair deal, especially look at the comparables. A four year deal in terms of the term, that is the right term for this because it bridges everything to Askarov coming in. But then again, if Askarov is not ready, then you can sign Saros to a two-year deal if you want to and see if he's yeah. good for that term. Or you move on after that. Four years is a good term. Five would have felt like too long. Three almost would have felt like too short because you're putting yourselves in a predicament where you need Askarov to be ready too soon. This gives the bridge opportunity for Askarov to finish his time in the KHL, come over to North America, get situated for a year in Milwaukee, if that's necessary, and even potentially back up Saros for another season to really figure out what you have. This is, I don't want to say a perfect deal, but this is exactly what the Predators and the use of Saros needed for both sides to be happy. I think a true bridge deal would have been two years. Yeah. I think a lot of players would take a two-year bridge deal. This is like a understanding bridge deal between the right. two sides, right? Like, I mean, you just laid it out perfectly where Saros gets to prove himself still but still make some decent money and the team doesn't handcuff themselves to a long-term goalie contract, which is the worst thing you can do in the NHL. Mm -hmm. Uh, Four years is fine. I I think anything, like you said, five would have been awful Four or three would have been like, well, kind of almost, because then you got to bandaid it. I'd rather have that fourth year than try to be precise with the three year uh, Askarov plan. Uh, It's just not smart GMing, but uh, I, I like the term a lot. People who are moaning and complaining and saying it's too much money is like, what do you, what do you want? I don't understand. You weren't going to sign him for $3 million. That's just not going to happen. Uh, I, I think everything is fair about it. There's nothing at first glance that makes <laughs> right. me go, this is a bad deal. It's a good deal. It's not handcuffing money. You're not just killing yourself essentially at the goalie position where you are long-term dedicated to a guy. It's a tradable contract. If he plays average, Yep. Average hockey at that contract with the salary cap eventually going back up, it's a tradable contract. It's not an $8 million anchor. Now, if he goes out and sucks and has like a four and a half goals against and like a sub 900 save percentage, then it's not a tradable contract. But I mean, let's just see what happens. I, I think like we were talking about before that Saros is somewhere in between the superhuman Saros we saw and what we've seen in the past. Yeah. So based on that value, it's, it's pretty good for me. Absolutely. And here's the thing. We don't need to be dragging on talking about stuff we've already talked about. The deal got done. That was the big one that we were waiting on. Yeah. And the Preds are pretty much set. I mean, if anything, what else? What else are we wait on? Ellie Tolvanen? Is that the only Tolvanen, other? But I mean, like, that's not, I'm not concerned about the contract because there's no. not, it's not going to be, unless for some reason it's a long-term contract, then I'm not going to be surprised when it's a year or two. That's yeah. just, it's not going to be groundbreaking. This was the big one. This is the big fish contract. Yes. And this is the done. one that needed to be done, and, and it got done. Well, moving on to other things, because there's no sense in us continuing to just talk about things and beating a, a dead horse here. Uh, the National Predators Development Camp opened up on Monday. So the big deal here is that you have a lot of guys that are being seen for the first time in person by each other, that are meeting each other for the first time in the organization. And it's been since 2019 since the Predators have had a development camp. They did not have one last year, obviously. And then this year taking place a little bit later than normal. The draft is obviously later, but typically the Predators have their development camp the week right after the draft. Obviously did not happen in 2020 and didn't didn't happen on time this year. So there's 2020 draft picks. This is the first time they're all probably meeting each other and meeting a lot of people in the organization. And David Poyle, it was joked with me by Preds PR, was having to introduce himself 
for the first time oh, wow. in person to a lot of these kids because they haven't been playing or they've been out of the country or they haven't been able to get over here. But I mean, there wasn't a reason for them to come to Nashville before anyways, not even the train because they have their own teams they're playing with. So this is a unique position uh, to have a development camp and they got pushed hard on Good. day one, very hard. Uh, it was Scott Ford, assistant coach with Milwaukee Admirals, Carl Taylor, head coach. And we're talking, these are some intense drills they're running. And it's not to compare it to any of the teams. I don't know what other teams do. But from what I saw, there was a tremendous difference. What I saw for day one of this development camp, from what I've seen in years past, in terms of the types of drills they were making these kids do, they were working them out and basically testing them to see who was in shape and who was out of shape as well. Because there were some kids that were definitely hunched over going, <sighs> so, oh, yeah. mm, what did you do this off season? You, you didn't do enough. <laughs> so it was curious to see as well the size differential in some of these kids. Uh, Joachim Kondalik, who is currently with Venue six, UConn, seven. six seven. He's a big it's dude. A and big dude. Yigor Afanasyev, who's six four and is a big dude, has to look up at Joachim Kondalik. <laughs> um, I, I, Kondalik can gain, gain like another. 10 to 15 pounds oh boy i think he'd be a scary human being on ice he's a he, he needs to work on his speed a little bit but that's just normal with a guy that size but he could <laughs> be a power forward up. yeah you're not going to move groot out there that easily no. uh luke prokop uh defenseman another big dude six he's, four he's thick too isn't he he's like yeah. 220 yeah 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 he, he's a thick boy out there uh so it's it's one of those things too seeing the size differential then you have him up one like then you have ryan ufko out there, 2021 draft pick, I think is listed at 5'10, maybe. He is 5'10. Gunnar Wolf Fontaine's 5'8, according to this. Yeah, but at least he's a forward. Yeah, uh, Patrick Harper, 5'7, 5'7, 150. Yeah, Patrick Harper is a small dude, but he's shifty uh, yeah. more than anything else. But it was good to see them get out there. It was good to see them running through drills. Uh, they were getting worked really hard. Philip Tomasino, he has this interesting facial hair going on where he oh, has God. like a pirate mustache and soul patch beard. <laughs> but you can tell he's just trying things out uh it's it was good just to be there at the rink and to see some of these kids and i'm not saying this to troll you i'm just saying zachary LaRue is like what you've been saying before he's probably the one of the closer ones to looking ready yeah because of his speed because of the way he approaches the game you can see the way he's thinking about a lot of things too. And when I say closest to ready as well, it's closest to ready for the position you expect him to be in, which is a bottom six player. Yeah. Uh, it's I, not going to take much seasoning for a bottom six player to be ready like a guy like him, which is not a bad thing. It just means that he's going to be, he's probably going to get a good look in preseason as well. You can fast track his development compared to a Phil Tomasino. Yeah. And like all this perceived hate that I have, I don't have <laughs> any for ZLH. Uh, I just think that, <laughs> He was drafted too high. That's the only qualm. I, I know. Have I know. I think he's going to be a good bottom six player in the NHL. He'll be a crafty guy. He'll be nah. Oh, he won't funny. be a Scott Hartnell or anything like no, that. No, I don't think but that. But he'll be like a very poor man, Scott Hartnell. He'll be aggressive. Yeah. He'll be a fan favorite. Like those are all the things there. And I mean, he doesn't have to do much more growing. He's already a bigger dude. Like he's not gigantic, but he's he's stocky. Yeah. And if he was any bigger, then he wouldn't be able to play his role successfully. Um, Scott, speaking of development, Scott Wheeler did his top 50 prospects yes. who are yet to play in the NHL. Uh, Phil Tomasino, 29. Mm -hmm. And do you know who number 50 is? David Ference. David Ference. That was a pretty good list. I like Scott Wheeler's stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think he's very talented. Uh, Byfield at number one was kind of surprising, to be honest. I expected Caulfield at number one, but. Caulfield's number two, right? Yeah, Caulfield's too. Okay, but like he on. was saying, like he was saying, he had four players there. He was like, any one of them yeah. could have been number one. Uh, no, it was really good. I like what he was saying about Philly Tomasino. All the stuff about David Ferentz at fifty surprised me. Yeah, because I didn't go through the list. I read like each and every single one of them, and then I was like, all right, we're at the last one. I saw David Ferentz. I was like, oh shit! Oh, another cool. another Fred. Yeah, Tomasino. I thought might have been a tiny bit higher, but he did make note that he did light it up in the AHL, and he's just he's growing the way he's supposed to grow yes. he's, tr he's tracking any, the right way yes there hasn't been any setbacks there's also been no like holy shit moments right it's just he is growing as a player the david parent stuff was pretty cool too like just appreciating that he's not super young but he has the talent there he's already played a bit and like i, I enjoyed the write-ups it was it was good I if did. you have the athletic go read that now and the focus too just seeing all the teams like oh no the detroit uh, another Detroit, another uh, King, another yeah. Detroit, uh, King, duck, Detroit, duck, 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 duck. Uh, Senator. Okay. 
Detroit. Uh, Abs. Bay Kings, Avalanche. Oh, 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 there's a predator. There's a predator. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking a lot of it was... Minnesota Wild players, too. Yes, plenty of Minnesota Wild players as well. But yeah, really good read. And it's the kind of thing, too, that if you're curious about prospects, but you're not going to do a deep dive because your brain just can't really handle that, this is a perfectly digestible type of list where you're going to get like a paragraph on each player overall, just so you can kind of see what's trending with the young players that are up and coming for the NHL. It's a good way for you to just enhance your knowledge of it without having to feel like you're doing a deep dive to where your brain can comprehend. It was very readable and digestible for a prospect list like this too. And doesn't get too deep into the weeds, but it gives you a good overview of the NHL and what you're looking forward to the future. It's such a good prospects for dummies piece. Yes. You just sit yes. there. Like you can get through it probably over a couple trips to the toilet and you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> like that's, that was, I read most of it at that reading spot and I was like, Oh, this is good. I don't want hemorrhoid. So I'm getting up. Oh my but gosh. Yeah, no, it's, it's a fun read. It's a good read, but it makes you feel smart because it, it's not broken down like into X Corsi and that and all that. It's like, he is good in this area. He's fast, but uh, he's bad in this area, his conditioning. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. I can have that conversation with someone now instead of being like, well, his stats are this and this and this. It's like, well, who gives a shit? Like, tell me what he looks like because that's what prospects are about is the eye test. Well, yes, and it's difficult. <laughs> it's difficult to rate the the advanced stats because the competition isn't same, same in a lot yeah. of so many of these leagues. Like, it's difficult in the OHL for a guy like Philip Tomasino, who's just going to dominate, but it's like, yeah. he's going to dominate. Cause that's the kind of player he is. It's, can he make it to the next step? If you want to look at advanced stats, if they're doing it in the AHL, then you're starting to get more same, same because you're playing against other men mm-hmm. in there against bigger size. Um, a lot of times where they're coming from Europe, the smaller sheet of ice, how they're adjusting there too. And you're playing in the, the, the league that's preparing you for the NHL yep. junior hockey college is difficult because there's such a varying talent pool when it comes to those leagues that it can throw things off, but you need to be able to see what the player's doing. Uh, but the Predators development camp uh, goes on for the rest of the week. Sessions are open to the public at Centennial, but just be aware you're not getting autographs. They have the section that is closest to the locker area that people are typically used to standing up for autographs, roped off for media and, and ops only, but you can go. A lot of these sessions are either going to be in the, the mornings, like at nine or 10 o'clock or at late afternoon, uh, three, three 30, something like that as well. There's goalie sessions that'll be taking place as well. So if you're interested in going middle of the free? day or take a lunch, it's free. Yeah. Centennial's free. Oh, I'd go to that in a heartbeat. Yeah. Just remember folks too, is a Metro and facility. So you have to wear a mask inside Centennial Sportsplex. Uh, you do also go through a security check. So like if you have a pocket knife or something like that, keeping in your car, that's, I know it's not a big deal, but it's like, oh, I'd hate for you to have to walk all the way back to your car because you brought something in that you just can't have, even if it's not like dangerous just to be aware because typically they don't have always security but when they do have predators things now there is a security checkpoint there as well uh so that's just something to go check out and then the future stars game will be at Fort Eye center bellevue on thursday at 5 p.m a very convenient time for everybody in nashville 5 p.m on a thursday uh season ticket holders or season ticket citizens get first dibs at tickets for that uh it is free but it's just in terms of re- reserving spots there and then I think they'll make things available and open to the public after that. Uh, masks are optional at Ford Ice Center, but highly recommended. It's just because it's not a Metro Run facility. So, okay. Uh, Predators Prospect Development Camp, based on paper, because obviously I know Matt can't be there to watch. And I'm going to strike a couple names from here, but I want it to be based on your knowledge, just of some Preds prospects, what you know about the O potentially too, and maybe being familiar with some of these names is what you've seen. So obviously not Tomasino, not not Harper because he's been a pro, Uh, not Afanasiev just because he's one of my favorites, not Zachary LaRue, and not David Ference. Who is a prospect that, for instance, you would like to see have a good week and make a decent impression throughout the week on the organization and through the, the, the future stars game because maybe they're a pick from the middle round or a late round, but you'd see there might be potential based on some of their stats. I know I'm putting you on the spot here, bud, because, yeah, yeah, I, fine. but, but I just, I think there's some names here that you might be able to make shit up on, off the top of your head. <laughs> um, a guy that I really want to see actually do something is Luke Evangelista. Ah, only, I hope you picked him. Uh, only because Evangelista's knock for so long has been, you got to fill out, you got to fill out, you got to fill out, you got to fill out. He hasn't filled out yet. He's not a big boy yet. And by big boy, I mean, like, you got to gain a few pounds here and there if you're going to hang and bang in the NHL. I mean, it's just, 
it, the second you take a hit, you're going to go flying. That's just how that works. It doesn't matter how small you are, but if you were 5'11", or around six feet, and you're only like a buck sixty soaking wet, that's where you're going to run into a bit of problems. Evangelista has been touted high. I remember that draft when he went in the second round. Everyone was like, wow, he kind of slipped a little. Evangelista has always had it. It's just there is so much more potential to Evangelista where people in that draft are drafting more sure things, not Zach or ZLHs, but they were drafting just players with more and more potential where Evangelista is a guy where, like I said, if he fills out, all the intangibles are there. There's a reason why, like, I'm so keen on I Like, I looked at the rest of the roster here, and it's just not many names that stand out to me like Evangelista other than the ones you kind of took away from me. <laughs> he, he got his seasoning in the AHL. I just think he needs another year in the AHL before he actually can make an impact. But the question was, who needs to do something real big during camp? It's him. It's him to show, like, I'm still here. I'm still good. But boy, could this kid use another 10, 15 pounds of muscle. It won't even affect his shot. It won't affect his skating. Like, I'm sure it will in very small increments. It's just the body figure needs to be there to match up with the skill that this kid has. Because I think he's part of the group with the Tomasino, with the Pitlicks, with the Afanasevs, with the, like this core guys, where he could come up and not necessarily be like, oh, what a surprise player, just like Robertson was for the Stars. But he could be like, a, oh, yeah, this is why the team drafted you so high kind of thing. This is why you fit in. Uh, he's a guy that I'm excited for. And he's not old. He's a young kid. Like, there's still time. We could have this conversation next year, and I would be not irritated that he's on my list for a second year in a row. But next year, he better have another 10, 15 pounds of muscle on him because right now he is undersized. Okay, well, let me give you my report on Evangelista. That's why I hope you picked him. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't trying to quarter you, but it just ended up working out. I liked what Evangelista had today in camp. And this is not me trying to look too deep into things. It's just you can see in terms of his abilities, just like what Matt was saying. So it's basically confirming what Matt was saying, that there's so much ability and talent there. He has good footwork, tremendous speed. He had great creativity. Not everything went his way, but you could see that the, the gears were turning really quickly in his head to try to make things happen when he's flashing quick moments of brilliance in a lot of these plays. Uh, he had a little bit of a taste of pro last year. He played 14 games with the Chicago Wolves. I know it's a big jump for a 19 year old to make when you're used to playing in the O and dominating and then jumping to the AHL like that. Tom, especially when you're a second round pick and, and you mm -hmm. drop a little bit per se uh, compared to Philip Tomasino, who came in and basically just flawlessly made that transition overall. He, he did really well in the AHL, but Evangelista had four assists and everything, but from development camp, there's an opportunity for him. He is signed. He is one of those uh, draft picks that has already been signed by the Predators. He has it, He's under his ELC, so whenever he's ready to burn a year, he'll be able to burn a year on the con contract. So it means the Predators see something to him as well, just like they do with Zachary LaRue, to uh, be a, an NHL player, or at least be a pro player. So I liked what I saw the first day of development camp. Uh, Evangelista was definitely pushing it, and he knew it was a nice, shiny gold chain. Uh, <laughs> while, he, while he's playing on the ice as well. Uh, but yeah, like you said, if he can fill out and have those other things match up, then he sets himself up to be one of those guys that could be like a solid third line player. Uh, and that's what would be I, fine. Th I think his ceiling could be even higher than a third line player. Could be, yeah. Like I, be. I think he could be, if he grew a bit, to, this is lofty, but he could be a very poor man's Anze Kopitar. Okay. Just right. very sound in his own end, more of a playmaker, but has that shot and can score goals. But he's just got to get bigger. That's right. like that's my only knock on this kid is just go to McDonald's and pound some Big Macs or something. <laughs> it, it doesn't like, have to be height. It just needs to be add some muscle mass, which yeah, he is. Can, he's only 19. So there's yeah, yeah. opportunity for, the, for that to happen. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, the only thing I compare that to is other 19 year olds are close to 200 pounds and hitting the weights hard kind of thing. Now, I don't know if it's like a genetic thing or anything like genetics. that. I, yeah, is it, but just another 15 20 pounds that's all yeah. i ask for and, and we see this with with plenty i mean philip forsberg granted he's a little bit taller than evangelista but philip forsberg his first two seasons uh he was lanky and everything too but he was a young he was a young kid but then forsberg put on the beef yeah uh, he put on some beef he got thicker and you see it up his physical game as well and that's been part of his game he's playing more physical with his with his ass checks that's he that he puts out there as well and that's what you want to see of these guys i think patrick harper you kind of know what you have in terms of his size and ability and to see if it's going to be successful or not. We'll see what it's like in the AHL, the season for him. And it'd be good too, for a lot of these kids to have more time with Carl Taylor. Cause Carl Taylor, as we've seen multiple times now is a developer. He can really work with these kids. And what I saw with him 
and this is just me kind of giving a full download of what I noticed at development camp, because there just weren't many people there today. So you're not going to hear much about it, uh, was that Carl Taylor with some of these drills, he's one-on-one -on -one working with a lot of these players, whispering in their ear, telling them little things, what he expects out of them on this drill and actually coaching them up. It's not about just running drills. It's he's working one-on-one -on -one with a lot of these players. That's what you want to see out of a coach especially in the AHL, if they're not coming in just for development and running these drills to evaluate, they're working with these guys. And it's, if, if they're doing that on the ice, then you know they're doing it off the ice. If yeah. you don't see it on the ice, then you don't know what's happening off the ice. And it probably could be happening and whatnot. But you see Carl Taylor taking a kid and pulling him aside and just talking to him and coaching him up and saying, this was good. This, was, this is what you need to work on. Make sure you're doing this on the drill, hyping them up and everything too. And there's a good motivation factor. I can tell he knows when to turn the switch on to up his voice and to up the volume of his voice and the aggressiveness in his voice and when to scale it back as well. These are all little things that go into coaching when you work with players of different ages, of different backgrounds, of different cultures and everything too, that he has to be so good at recognizing that fact as well. And that's something he has talked about multiple times is that he has to be able to coach them individually one-on-one -on -one to get on their level with what they're going to respond to. So this is me just kind of gushing over Carl Taylor, what he's been yep. able to do and knowing that he's probably not going to be with the Predators much longer because he's going to get a big boy job in the NHL sooner rather yep. than later, unless the Predators are able to find some way for him to be on the main coaching staff, because Carl Taylor is a gem in the organization right now with the way he can develop players and the way he's coaching and his coaching style and the way he's willing to talk about that openly as well. I compare a lot of what Carl Taylor does to what Dallas Aikens did. And he Dallas Aikens with Toronto, with the Marlies, was just not a guru with those kids, but he was shaping them to be good. Like he had a lot of those, the rhymers, just when people were like, who is James Rhymer? Why should we care? And it was just the same thing. It was got to give him the confidence, got to let him play kind of thing, got to figure it out. And then from there, San Diego and Anaheim went, so we're going to take you now. And then Edmonton was before Anaheim actually, because that's what happens to good coaches. And now any coach who goes to Edmonton basically dies. So I kind of give him just a <laughs> clean slate on that one. But he's in a great spot. And Anaheim recognizes that right now where he has all those kids. He has Zegras. He has Drysdale. Like he has all those young guys. And Anaheim knows what they have. They're allowed to suck for a few years. I think Carl Taylor would be a fantastic coach. But it's just, it won't, I don't think it'll happen as a head coach in Nashville. Unless John Hines completely shits the bed next year. Yeah, no, I don't see that. If anything, it'd be assistant first uh, yeah. with this organization, then work his way up from there. So, okay, Matt. Well, that's kind of our, our hockey breakdown. Oh, real quick, I want to throw this out because I did a recording with uh, um, a sister podcast of the Penalty Box Radio Network with the boys over at Pucks Out Podcast. I saw and, you chug a beer. Oh, God, I did. It was, <laughs> I'm proud of you. I'll say that. Oh, come on. It was with a Kong. <laughs> I've never used a Kong before. I know. Like, I could, I could tell. It here's was very a Kong. Fun. Do it. I got it done pretty darn quick. <laughs> if you watch the video, I'm pretty sure I watched it like once or twice. Everyone else had theirs way higher than you looked over. You're like, oh, shit. And I had to push yours higher. I got it done. You I mean, did. I, man, a lot of people can't do that. It just goes down and comes and, right back up. So and the thing it. is, it wasn't even with cheap beer. This was Burrow Blonde from made at least brewery. it was a blonde beer and not like an ipa oh, or something i don't do oh IPAs. my god i don't do ipas but it was fun to record with them look for that episode to come out soon uh they do a beer side chat so it's actually recorded in the brewery while they're making beer so it's nice and cool. warm inside there but just talking with the brewer himself from made a brewery ozzy and then talk about the predators in general too and then we did a full thing and so i'm jealous we didn't think of this we did it, was, it takes probably three or four people to do this a snake draft of mcu heroes and oh, you have to cool. build your that's team. Fun. And we made sure to, to like what I did with, with you, cross out certain ones that couldn't be used based on the power. Like Captain Marvel couldn't be used. She's cheat just, code. Yeah, it's cheat code because of how powerful she is overall. Even yeah. though we haven't seen that in the MCU, just overall, she's too powerful. And I kept my, my quiet because I was hoping they were not going to strike out Scarlet Witch. <laughs> because she is, she's a Nexus being. She's super powerful. Yeah. So here, here was my team that I built up. And I want to see your take on this. And knowing what, pick what did you have, I had the last pick in a snake draft. Okay. So I got to do doubles back to back and everything, but then I had to wait yep. a couple rounds as well. So I have Scarlet Witch, Doctor Strange. Ooh. Yeah. Um, and then Shang Chi. Okay. Shuri, and Miles Morales. 
Oh, I, that's a sneaky pick at the end. I yeah. like that Miles so pick I, at the end. I had my my reasoning behind all this. So especially Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange, how you can mess with reality and time. There's so much manipulation, yeah. So much manipulation in, with, with reality and time and what you can do to make different things happen. And then Shang-Chi, because he's just powerful, everything yeah. too, with how he can manipulate with the ten, ring, 10 rings. Shuri for technology, because she is uber smart with technology, and Miles Morales to offset the other pick of Spider-Man from another team. I like it. That's smart. There's, it's, they're all rational picks. It wasn't I picked this because they're badass. Like, right. did, how high did people like Hulk go, or was Hulk not? Hulk was also scratched, sorry. Because he's considered okay. the strongest Avenger. Was Iron Man available? <laughs> Iron Man was the first pick. As was Thor. Thor and Iron Man were the first picks before me with Scarlet Witch. And I was like, ooh, I think I won this one. If you had first overall, what would you have picked? Scarlet Witch. Over Iron Man and Thor. Because it's not the, of it's not the sexy pick per se, it but it's not. like the right pick. Because I think if I had first overall, I'd <laughs> probably pick Iron Man just because of it's Tony Stark. You get Iron Man and you get Tony Stark. You get yeah, both. and he's really intelligent too. And the money. And the money, and the yes. resources, right? Like and that Thor is powerful as well, but Scarlet Witch, in terms of the different types of power she has, that's what I went with. And I was like, that's why I didn't play my hand at all. This. It, I was, like, did, was Vision available? Vision was available. Somebody did take Vision in the second round after I picked Scarlet Witch to offset yes. her. I think if you were able to jump into the third round and get Vision too, that would have been nuts. I know, I know. That would have been nuts. I did not think of that. But, I mean, we, we made sure we, we didn't allow Loki to count because he's an anti-hero. Oh, damn. I was about to ask where Loki went. I know, because... but I was very, like, that was a really fun thing. So we're going to have to figure out something to do similar to that, but not yeah. take, stealing that idea and everything too, because basically it's like, they're going to put it to a vote. So make sure you're checking out Pucks Out Podcast on Twitter to see about that. Put it to a vote for, if it's going to be the popularity contest or who would actually win in a battle. That's, That's what it's going to come down to, because we the could... other team has like Iron Man, Spider-Man, and it's like, well, you're going to win the popularity contest. Yeah. If, for, if, like... if one of our listeners can think of an idea I think we can involve them. We can. I think. I yeah, think. I, I think you're right. Have a because, like you said, I think we need more people to do this. Yeah. Because just me and you would just be a lot of screaming. So <laughs> we, we need to offset that a bit. So yeah, I'm done. Down to do either okay. something hockey related or pop culture related. There's a lot. Okay. Yeah. There is. There absolutely is. Okay. Next thing. Uh, I know it's been difficult for Matt to keep up with movies, just because uh, reasons. <laughs> <laughs> so rhymes he, of Schmovid, yeah i know he finally saw a movie now so we 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 can't talk about some things like free guy yet can't talk still can't talk about black widow yet i i can watch that it's on the thing that i used to watch movies oh it's on the thing he uses to watch movies i'm not telling you if it's paid or unpaid but it's a thing uh pay for your stuff people okay but he did watch f9 finally <laughs> Fast I don't nine. know why I watched that bag of crap. It's, <laughs> it's hilariously and lovingly awful. That's why. John Cena needs to never do a serious movie again. Well, okay. Speaking of John Cena, have you seen the new Suicide Squad yet? No, not yet. It's on HBO Max as well. Okay, so I know you don't it. have. But John Cena was perfect as the peacemaker because it's supposed to be bad. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like I saw that he's doing his press tour with like the stupid mask on and all that stuff yes. still. So Just that makes mask. complete sense. But his role in Fast 9 was just bad. Hey, you need to adjust your camera. You must have knocked it. Why? Oh, am I not You're a little off. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> the vacuum but, was close to the center of frame. <laughs> there we go. I'm just getting heated up talking about John Cena. The rest of the movie was awful and hilarious. <laughs> they went to freaking space. <laughs> In a Pontiac. In a Pontiac. <laughs> but my favorite part, I think, was Chunky Bow Wow. Oh, I yes. loved old Chunky Bow Wow in that movie. And that, that was that was a good throwback. When you bring on the guys from Tokyo Drift, I'm like, oh my God. Oh, that was a big oh my God yes. moment. That yes. Was... It's like it brought it all together finally. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So this is a touchy subject. What did you think about like the homage to Paul Walker throughout? Where so, they were like, he's he's watching. The kids are with Paul, and then right. at the end, or that he's on his way, he'll be here. So the ending part, if you haven't seen the movies, spoiler alert. Fast forward to the end. I'm sorry. Where it's like, oh, we still have one more seat, and then he rips in his skyline. I was like, I like that. But early in the movie, when they were like, oh, Paul's watching the kids. I was like, really? That's the excuse we come up with. 
Like why is that really his name in the movie, Paul? Or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> but but like, yes, it's curious, but I think they have to do that to account for they kept him alive instead of killing his character off. So there'd be I know in this F9, so there's not like reasons for us to question plot and storyline and everything, yeah, but for yeah. some continuity of plot, they have to address what is happening with the kids since Mia is a part of the team now, which is like why would Mia be coming? But it's because it's her brother. So that's how yeah. they tie it in with John Cena yeah. and everything. Why they have Mia be a part of it. <laughs> so stupid. John but it's like, Cena. they're eventually going to have to do something with this. Cause there's going to be, they're, they're going to continue the, the fast series as long as they can. They're, it's just already been said. It makes there's money. So that's it. Yeah. It makes money and it's fun. It's bad. It's stupid. It's, inter- it's entertainment is what but it is. You'll watch it and you'll watch it. It's dumb entertainment. It's turn your mind off, eat popcorn entertainment. So yeah. we're going to have to address this sometime if Mia, the character of Mia is still going to be in this, how are they going to do this? Because they decided not to kill him off, kill the character off, even though the actor himself is passed on. Yeah. So I'm very curious to see what they're going to do with that because with the Fast and Furious movies, there's so much awful plot structure and stupid things that I mean, they can pull, they went to freaking space. Like, like you said, I, I, so. Half the time during that movie, I'd be on my phone, like just checking something because I wasn't really like caring to watch it intently. And then I swear to God, I'd look at my phone for maybe 10 seconds and I'd look up and like, why are they in Tokyo? Like, what's going on here? Why are half of them like in Mexico? Like what's happening? What, what is going on? But it's, it's at like the when end they go the to day, Dubai and they drive through buildings and fly. Oh, Jesus Christ. Or in the beginning of the movie when uh, Vin Diesel hooks the corner of the car yes. onto that side and then whips the car around. There's so many parts where it's like they should be dead. Oh, yes, of course. If they're doing these missions for the government, which is weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're calling in favors. And it's like, so this guy's in the movie for about three and a half seconds. Okay, cool. This guy's in the movie for about two and a half seconds. Uh, okay, okay, cool. cool. Oh, just <laughs> just Christ. And then the ending with John Cena. Like, shut up. I know. Shut I off. know. Uh, oh. You really need to see Suicide Squad, the new one. I thought it was, it was just what it needed to be. I heard it's slightly better than the last one, which is not promising. Who do you get your movie reviews from? People who have the same taste in movies as me. And like generally like... It is and, 10 times better than the other one because James Gunn did it. Uh, also, that weasel thing is terrifying. I haven't seen the movie yet, but that Weasel is, is going to be your favorite, one of your favorite characters. Maybe I'll watch that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's so, okay. The new Suicide Squad is what it needs to be because it is self-aware. So it knows it's kind of bad. It it 96 it, on Rotten Tomatoes. Yes, it knows it's supposed to be some cheese in there, but they also develop characters. Idris Elba knocks out of the park with his character he knocks out of the park and the reason it need to be rated r for a reason so they could let james gunn do what he need to do one we know what he's done with guardians of the galaxy and the soundtrack was awesome hmm. and the villain is hilarious like it's supposed to be cheesy comic book cheese is what it's supposed to be it doesn't overly focus on harley quinn either which is what people expect it to do because it's harley quinn and it's she's great yeah, but they don't do that. They focus on multiple characters and actually develop some of these characters. And I mean, Taika Waititi makes an appearance in this as well. I'll go and throw that out there. So there's a lot of Marvel elements within this too, which is why it's a better film because they let James, Warner Brothers let James Gunn do what he needed to do to make a good movie instead of pulling apart the original Suicide Squad cut, which from what we've heard, the original Suicide Squad cut was actually pretty good. And then Warner Brothers ruined it, just like what they did with Justice League. Yeah, it's like what they do with all these things. Let these directors do what they're supposed to do if you trust them to do their job. So I highly, highly recommend the new Suicide Squad because immediately within the first five minutes, you know it is a James Gunn movie. Okay, maybe I should have watched that instead of Fast Nine. But the only piece of Suicide Squad content that I've watched so far, it came up on my YouTube. It was John <laughs> Cena and Pete Davidson reviewing like workout equipment. And that was a solid 10 plus minutes of my life that I'll never get back. And I'm okay to lose it because it was very funny. I feel like Pete Davidson's humor was truly understood by John Cena. Mm-hmm. And I think Pete Davidson's a funny guy. Like I love him on SNL. I think he's a complete idiot and he works it well. And John Cena was laughing at his jokes. And I was like, that's good. Good for you, Pete. Y- you will appreciate the way they utilize Pete Davidson in this movie. Okay. Because I, I, I like, not that I have a soft spot for Pete Davidson. I just think he's talented and gets mm-hmm. more shit than he should. Oh, for sure. Uh, and he, again, he's self-aware with his humor too. 
he, nice. he, he knows what he's doing. Uh, but in this movie as well, there are plenty of nice cameos that if you definitely are a nerd and you pay attention to a lot of these things, you'd be like, oh my God, they got this person in this movie? That kind of thing. Uh, okay, so to wrap up the episode, we're wrapping up now. Yeah, we're wrapping up. Okay. Yeah, we covered everything. Yeah, we covered everything. I got some boxes <laughs> in the mail of Funko Pops. I forgot what I ordered. <laughs> I like that. So, That's always the best. So I figured I'd go ahead and open them. So if you're not watching on the YouTube, you're listening to the podcast, I'll make sure to describe what is happening. So I'm going to get a box this one is from pop in a box it arrived uh, today so let's see what's in this one um that seemed easy to open and easy to open oh it is the vision oh, cool that i already have a version of jesus christ how did that happen actually maybe i d- you no, know it's totally a problem do. when you don't know if you have that one or not. So what hap- what had happened was everything was Funko. everything was sold out. It was sold out. And so I went ahead and got it when I saw it. And then Alex, my girlfriend, found a bunch of them at Walmart, the non-glow in the dark one and the glow in the dark one. And so it was afterwards. Like this has been ordered for months. Months. Oh, wow. Okay. Like Funko Pops pre-order months in advance. So that's why I lose track and I forget what I order. Because months we're talking. Does it not send you an email? It's like your order is shipped. Well, yeah, but then it doesn't say what was in the order all the time for privacy purposes. Oh. Okay. Okay. This next one is from GameStop. Oh, okay. This is the next in the edition of the Star Wars Bounty Hunters. The Bosk. Nice. And so if you're watching the video in the back, there is so a wall small. and and all of these connect so boba fett was obviously the first one um and then i think ig10 will be another one and they'll all they'll all connect so you have a wall of bounty hunters when they all get done connecting that's pretty sweet i like that one sweet. yeah it's pretty sweet so have that and i think i have a couple more that have come in that so i finally got some pops in that were star wars ones it's the one second so i can show you okay this came in really late <laughs> but i need to show the audience and explain why so i was just thinking if you ever move i want you to live stream you packing up all your funkos because i want to see how you pack all of them because there are so many <laughs> lots of bubble wrap yeah so i have another one this is from empire strikes back it's luke training with yoda Yoda on his back. Oh, that's cool. I really like cool. that one. And then this is Darth Vader in his chamber. That's cool. Without the mask. So these two pops, I want to say to people, this is me going on my little Karen rant. Never pre-order from Big Apple Collectibles. Whoo, there goes a possible sponsor. I wouldn't want them. Big Apple Collectibles. Never, never, never pre-order from Big Apple Collectibles. Let me tell you why, though. Big Apple Collectibles does not pre-order enough stock, yet they keep selling spots. So That's stupid. I ordered these pops, Matt. Though those two plus two others in January 2020. January 2020. Those two pops just arrived two weeks ago. Yeah, that's not okay. <laughs> And the only reason they finally ship, so here's the thing that Big Apple Collectibles does on their website. They'll say waiting for supplier, waiting for supplier. So they oversell the pre-order spots and then they have to wait for a supplier to catch up and getting it to them. So I had two other pops that took 11 months to get to me when it only should have taken four. So seven months late. And then Holy these shit. arrived that late only because I sent an email and dropped the F-bomb in the email. <laughs> okay. <laughs> was like emails <laughs> It's like this order is placed in January 2020. It says it is in stock and ready and available to ship. I want my pops <laughs> or refund me. And what they say, sorry, here's your pop. Yes. Like the next day was a, a sh- shipping label has been created by <laughs> Big Apple Collectibles. That's wild. Okay. Well, if you shouldn't buy from Big Apple, where the hell should you buy from? Because I was on their oh, site. And I was like, oh, there's a bunch of stuff that I like. Where should pop- I order from that? Popping off toys is great. They're actually local to Nashville. They have a shop here in Nashville, but they also sell online. They're great with pre-orders uh, and everything. I mean, pop in a box typically ships okay, typically, sometimes. 
Um, there are lots of different places that don't necessarily pack the best. Amazon doesn't pack the best. Um, Hot Topic's awful at their collect at the way they pack. GameStop is a little bit better. Um, there's Empire Collectibles, which does okay sometimes. There's so many different ones that aren't Big Apple Collectibles. Um, and here's the thing. If Big Apple Collectibles has it in stock, that means they'll be able to ship it. Like if you're ordering the website right now and it says it's in stock and can ship to you, they'll get it to you. It's just don't do a pre-order. Okay. No so if, okay. Cause I, I like, I just look on Amazon and shit like that. And it's just like, yeah, but there are plenty of collectible shops that do ship like even to Canada. Cause I know popping off ships to Canada. I was about to ask you that. And they have plenty of grails and stuff like that on their website um, and everything too. But yeah, big apple, it took from January, 2020 to end of July, 2021 to get pops. It's a long time. Cause I've been seeing these in stores and everything. And not purchasing them because I knew I had them on pre-order. That's way too long. It's a long time for fulfillment, right? Uh, so, yeah. all right. Well, folks, we will probably not have an episode next week. One, because I'll be at Disney World. Yeah, hell so yeah. If you are a listener in Orlando, please let me know. You never know. I might see you at one of the parks, something like that. Or we can, you know, do a photo shoot. A photo shoot. <laughs> at Hollywood Studios. <laughs> So, so I'll be at Disney and Matt will be out of town as well. The big yeah. news we were waiting to break was the use of Saros one. And luckily that happened before we both went on vacation. So Predators training camp is just around the corner. They have development camp. and I'm assuming some of these prospects might actually stay in town. Who knows? Uh, because if they're reporting for rookie camp, uh, the ones that go into college, obviously would go back to their schools, but junior hockey players and pro players are probably just going to stay in town and continue to train for like what the two weeks between now and rookie camp. And then training camp starts after that. The season is upon us uh real quick hits as well because been also recorded make sure we have this milwaukee to chicago trip that we're planning uh for november 6th and 7th but it's going to be basically all inclusive in terms of travel especially if you're in nashville it'll include the flight to milwaukee the milwaukee admirals game all the transportation as well from airport uh to the the hotel include the hotel include the transportation as we take a charter bus from Milwaukee to Chicago, which is only an hour and a half away. We'll, atten- we'll attend the Predators versus Chicago Blackhawks game on a Sunday and then fly back the morning of Monday. So the most you probably have to take off from work, folks, is a half day on Monday because the flight is going to be the evening on Friday to go up to Milwaukee. That's pretty uh, good. Yeah, we're going to have it all set up and everything too. We will have meet and greets with Milwaukee Admirals players, so Predators prospects after the game. We'll get an arena tour, and we're going to have some merch discounts. have a good goodie bag for you. Uh, staying in a nice hotel in downtown Milwaukee. All the information uh, is on Ships and Trips Travel, and we'll make sure to include that link. I'll reply back to when we post this episode uh, for more information on that. And, and we're working on something special for New Year's Day because we typically are making a penalty box right a tradition to get together new year's day the predators play the blackhawks early afternoon new year's day so be on the lookout for that we're going to try to get together for a brunch um, oh, maybe nice. a special guest and then stadium series since we have the start time now scheduled at 6 30 p.m central a little bit later than i thought it would be uh obviously probably the sun had a little role to play in that being in the south so we're looking to do a pre-game party instead of a post-game party for we'll that. still go out post game. Oh yeah, we'll still go post game, but a pre game for more family friendly stuff. We'll do a pre game party somewhere downtown Nashville. I'm and- family friendly. Okay, so and, then, <laughs> and then, <laughs> lastly, our special guest for our Cancun trip was just announced, and that is the one and only voice of the National Predators, Pete Weber, will be joining us in Cancun. And here's what's awesome about Pete Weber. We'll have a cocktail hour with Pete Weber, so you get to talk to him, mingle with him. Then we're going to have a dinner, a private dinner with him. But the big thing I'm most excited for is storytelling with Pete. Folks, Pete Weber has been in the sports world for so many decades. It's ridiculous. The amount of stories he has that he cannot share it with the general public because yes. they are too raunchy or not appropriate is just beyond me what is in his head. So we'll be getting some of his stories that will definitely not be any less than PG-13 Yes, <laughs> at this trip in Cancun. Uh, so I hope you can join us in July 2022 for that trip. It is at an all-inclusive resort in Cancun, not on the Strip. So we'll be removed from the Strip. And you have a choice to choose between, I think it's a five, six, and seven-day package. So it's not like you have to stay the whole week. You can do five, six, or seven-day package. And we have oceanfront suites 
and swim up suites, meaning you walk right out of your room into a pool. That'd be so good, but so no. dangerous if you're intoxicated. That's also true. Uh, but yeah, the way we do it, if you have not traveled with us with Penalty Box Ready Me before, I don't do things half-assed. No, you got to do it right. Yeah, we're going to do it right. You're going to have a good experience. My uh, Mine is not about you, quote unquote, saving money when you're doing these travel things. It's about having a kick-ass experience. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. So yeah, we're not going to be on the cheaper end, but I guarantee you, you're going to have freaking fantastic experience when you travel with us that's just how we roll with experiential things that's why when we had the opportunity if we were going to do any garden rooms for this trip in cancun it's like no we're doing oceanfront and swim up that's it yeah so people to go and not have any regrets stop the room that they booked in cancun you're going to have a fantastic experience whatever you're doing with us and we 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 did that whole Hopefully, most people were excited what, what we did in Dallas. We did it in D.C. Same thing's going to happen with Milwaukee, and we're going to work on something special with the Admirals to do a locker room tour and a meet and greet with players after the game. So you get to talk with players, get some autographs after the game uh, as well. And then plan is for club level uh, for the Blackhawks game. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'd be quite happy with that. It's not like you're not going just to say, oh, I went. You're going to say, oh, I went and did this. Yeah, you had an experience. Like, yes, because and- anyone can pay dirt cheap go to a game show up and like the right. nosebleeds in the last no 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 right. that what you're doing yeah and the milwaukee chicago trip also is to include a, a private uh lunch in chicago with just us just our group as well i also nice. have that set up so if you're not in nashville like say for instance you're in milwaukee and you listen or if you're in a different city and and you listen and everything you want to join us on that milwaukee and chicago trip shoot us a message shoot me a message i can get you in touch with our travel agent she can set that up if you just want to take us with us at the game in milwaukee and what now we can do that for you so please let me know and everything else i just railed on for a lot but it's some fun shit coming up with penalty box radio some fun shit i want you to be a part of and hey we'll get things together too i know matt and i want to do a live recording as well yep. for stadium series weekend so we'll get that handled once we get closer to time mm-hmm. uh, anything else to add matt no i'm out i'm good uh um, all right have fun at disney i'm sure you and i are gonna talk before that but oh yeah 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 just it's gonna be a good time Thank you. I'll have big news to share when I get back. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right. All right, folks. Have a good rest of your day or night or evening or whenever you're listening. This is Preds Pucks Pinoys. Follow us on Twitter at Triple P Podcast underscore. He's at Best of Matt. I'm at Justin B. Bradford. And as always, feel free to interact with us. Give us ideas and whatever you want us to talk about next. (laughs) All right, folks. (laughs) Bye.